Okay, so um, before we get started, I know it's a difficult day and a difficult time of the day. So if anybody feels like the high school thing happening, it's totally okay. Close your eyes, relax. If anybody at any point feels that you know they need to leave, it's totally okay. Um, I should also thank you. Um, this is something that I've wanted to do for a very, very long time. The opportunity to do this with Richard is uh, a little bit of a dream come true. For me, it's the closest thing I'm going to get to uh, singing a song on a stage. So uh, thank you, Rich, for, uh, for everything. Definitely not happening. I picked the one day when I couldn't sing, so we're really OK. Um, what we wanted to try to do, specifically at this point in the day, is sort of try to put everything into context. Um, we're more than 2 thirds of the way through um, this very difficult emotional day. If we're uh, appreciating the day appropriately, we've given a lot of thought to a lot of things. Um, but what we wanted to try to do is sort of turn it into something positive. Turn it into something that takes energy in the right direction from this overwhelming day and use it to hopefully propel us into a situation where we're making a difference, where we're impacting what's going on around us. So what I wanted to do is go back to the start, right? We've heard from many different speakers over the course of the day, and we've heard throughout our years growing up why Tisha B'Av happened, why Chorban Bet HaMikdash happened, because of Sinat Chinat, right? And this word, Sinat Chinat, anybody want to give me an idea of what that means? Because I'm not even sure what that means. Anybody? What's Sinat Chinat? Yeah. Hating your friend, good. Baseless hatred, good. So hatred I got, the baseless part is a little tougher to understand, right? So I did a little bit of research and what it seems to me is that it was just random. People were just not treating others appropriately for no reason. That they would lash out at each other over seemingly small things. That they just weren't considerate of each other's feelings. So if that's the case, maybe what we have to be looking at, specifically in this point of Tisha B'Av, is what can we do to turn that around? Because I think you can very comfortably say it's very hard to go through a day in the world that we live in without seeing baseless hatred. As far away as we are from the time of Beth HaMikdash, we're not so far away because it's still happening around us every single day. And all you have to do is watch the news or open a newspaper to see it. So we have to try to figure out what the antidote is. What can we do to break that chain of Sinat Khina? Anybody? Good, I don't think so. So what I came up with was this idea of baseless love. Just being kind and nice to somebody for no reason. Because if basic hatred means we can randomly treat people inappropriately and unfairly and meanly, maybe we can figure out a way to just randomly treat people nicely for no reason. To just treat people the right way because. And by doing that, it sort of backed into really what the concept of chesed is all about. Because chesed is not staka. Staka is very different. And let me try to share with you the following story to explain it. We have two minutes. Whole basis love makes sound more fluffy. Good. So here's what it is. Picture, if you will, a minute a day like today. This is weird. Picture for you a little minute of a day like today and a mom with three or four little kids trying to figure out how to pass the day. So what she decides to do is take her kids to an arcade. And they get to the arcade and she buys that package of coupons, right? Those little tokens that the kids need to go on the rides and play the games. And she gives a couple of tokens to each one of her kids and sends them on their way. And sure enough, a few minutes later, her son, who's all of five or six years old, comes back and says, Mommy, I need more tokens. It's only three minutes. What would you do with the tokens? And he proceeds to put his hand in his pocket and pull out his pocket, and there's no tokens, but there's a hole 
in the bottom of his pocket. That mom now has two choices. She can give him more tokens, at which point in all likelihood, he's putting them right back in the same pocket. Or she could stop and explain to him what happened and teach him that what the difference is between just running back and asking for more tokens is to learn from what you did and put the tokens in a different pocket. That, in many respects, is the difference between staka and chaseh. The easy thing most times for us to do is to give staka. We write a check, we take a few dollars out of our pocket, we even run an event to raise some money. And it's awesome and it's great, but it's staka. It's much more difficult to do the heavy lifting of actually helping somebody change their life, making a difference in somebody else's life, as opposed to just, and don't get me wrong, Saka is incredibly important, but I think Chesed is just on a much higher level. And I think that's what basis love is. I think it's the Chesed and the kindness that we do to people, not just to do good things, but to make a difference in their lives, to improve where they are, to change what their reality is. So I took one more step back, and now we can go full speed ahead. How does someone come to do baseless hatred? See, not to be Anybody here, you know, really good at Sinatina? Nobody admitted it, right? And even if we were, you would have to think that there's probably a way to justify it, right? That guy cut me off, that's why I cut him off. That person wasn't nice to me, that's why I spoke about them in front of somebody else. Or on and on and on. And I think what ends up happening is when it's okay for us to hate without any reason, it's sort of a reflection of what's going on inside of us. If we're unhappy, if we're unfulfilled, if we're angry, if we're frustrated, then it's really easy to project that onto somebody else. So I think a big part of this is first figuring out what we need so that we can figure out how to help everybody else with what they need. Good? Still got it, come on. Guys, it's still okay, but it's good. Misplaced that, exactly. And if you have that anger in you, it's going to find a place to go. And it, God knows it's not hard to find a place to put it. There are more than enough opportunities. Good? Okay. So I want to share one story with you, and then we're ready to go. So did any of you ever hear of a gentleman called Alfred Nobel? Good. Anything else? So here's a very interesting story for those of you not old and wise enough to, uh, to know it. A gentleman called Alfred Nobel created dynamite. Not only did he create dynamite, he figured out a way to use it in weaponry to hurt others. He used it as a way to sort, he figured out a way to use explosives in a way that could be most damaging and most hurtful to as many people as possible. And a little bit later on in his life, a very interesting thing happened. Alfred Nobel's brother passed away. And a newspaper in his town mistakenly thought he had passed away. So they published his obituary. And in his obituary, they went back on his life accomplishments. And the summary of it all was that he was pretty much a merchant of death and destruction. He had the opportunity to read and hear his own obituary, something I think most people probably never have. But it really threw the guy into a loop. He said, wait a minute, my whole life's accomplishment, all that I've done, and basically the summary of all of it is that I'm a merchant of death and destruction. That's what I have to show for my life. And he decided to completely shift gears. He decided to take all of his considerable wealth and figure out a way to use it to support people who are doing good things for mankind. 
Anybody ever hear of the Nobel Peace Prize? Same guy. Thousands and thousands and tens of thousands of dollars have been given from his estate to support people who do things to better society and help others. Because he realized that his life's accomplishment was anything but what he wanted it to be. And he had to figure out a way to change that narrative. So here's what I want you all to think about for a second. Every single one of us was put here on earth for a very specific reason. God does not make fillers or accidents. He makes each of us for a purpose and a reason. We need to figure out what that reason and purpose is. And then we need to work towards accomplishing that mission. Work towards accomplishing that purpose. I would like to think that God put up to each of us here with the opportunity and the job of impacting the world around us. And we have to make a decision. How exactly is that going to work? And what exactly is my life's work going to look like when that day comes? This is not meant to be morbid or depressing. What it's supposed to get us to do is think a little bit about the responsibility that each of us has in our own hands. Every single one of us has that responsibility. I think the challenge of Tisha B'Av and the challenge of our lives is what do we do with that responsibility? So good. So everybody's ready. We're all good. It's only ten to five. Hey, we got some time. Let's have some fun. Okay. So what I was afraid of is that each of you was going to be looking at me exactly like you're looking at me. So Richie and I decided to be both creative and mean at the same time. Can somebody pass these out? What we're going to try to do is help you figure out exactly what that mission is. And if we shake you up a little bit in the process, that much the better. So I think we have enough of these. As they didn't hand it out, I'll tell a little story. So uh, when I was about 17, I asked. Of course. I was about 17, I think. 18 or 19, one of those teams. I got approached uh, actually by SBH at the time, uh, by David Sid, and we know, teaches a uh, group, and uh, he told me, we want you to be president of SBH Youth, which I think is phenomenal. Uh, and this is just a personal story, so uh, everyone has their own story. So I said, oh, what is, what is it about? He said, well, we had halal delivery, we had visiting the sick, we had more beautiful things. I said, well, I'm on it, let me think of that. I went back the next day, and I sat with David, and David Dweck, who was working for SDH at the time, and I told him I'm out. He said, what are you talking about? I said, I don't know, maybe there's something wrong with me, but these things don't fill me up inside. I think it's beautiful, and I could do that. I could go visit a senior citizen and make them laugh. Um, I could live with Halua and, and see that I'm, I'm feeding someone for Shabbat and make them smile, but it doesn't do it for me. And when I think about doing it, I don't get excited, and I don't get supercharged. So if you want someone that's going to lead the charge, it can't be me. Because if I'm not excited about it, then it's probably you know, not going to get the rest of the, uh, the youth involved. So, but I did want to get involved. And at the time, there was a couple of things that were being worked on. And one of the things that I thought was, was very important was, I don't know if any of you remember, was Spark. So we started something new at the time because I told them I'd like to get involved, but I really don't want to go visit me. I don't want to live a hello. Those things are beautiful. I need to be involved with the youth. I want to be connected to them. There's major issues that are happening. We need to educate them. And we started a little program called Spark. And what that was was strengthening pride and reinforcing kindness. And what we did was we came up with scenarios, bullying, drug abuse, self-esteem, all different things that high schoolers and eventually 8th, 7th, 6th, 5th grade were dealing with. And we had community leaders just go in and facilitate conversations around these things. And little did I know, a couple years would go by and it ended up becoming Project Safe. Some of you may be familiar with, but it's a curriculum that goes into schools with professionals at this point. So the reason why I'm telling you this story is that um, sorry, Chesed is awesome, and it, 
Fred can be the answer, but I think the first thing that we need to figure out is what fills us up inside. What gets me supercharged? What are the things that I can do them every day? What are the things even that I've done when I'm in that moment get me excited? And I know that I'm in my element. And the question that we handed out will start to frame that, will start to help you build that. Because once you start to figure out those things, then it just becomes expressions of who you are in different ways. Different so um, take a minute, look at the questionnaire, start filling it out. We are going to pull on most of you in the audience as we go. That's why I had this wireless mic. It wasn't just a face to sit on the side and watch Charles talk. Um, and uh, hopefully we can work it a little bit over the next half hour and start to dial in on some of the things that really express who you are as an individual, and then eventually you can find that expression through different ways of connecting to people, things, and events. Thank you. Okay, so here's where we want to try to go with this. You ready now so that gets interesting. So all this was supposed to do was prompt you a little bit and think about a little bit what you would like, what context you would like to volunteer. But now we're going to put each of you on the spot. If you had one activity, one thing that you could do all the time, anything you want, Richie's would be? Writing and playing music. Good. Richie's would be writing and playing music. Mine would be eating ice cream. But <laughs> if you could do anything you want, quick, first thing that pops into your head, what would it be? Surfing. Bridge, good. Amen. We'll talk after. Good. <laughs> Reading, awesome. You know that, girls? Different kinds of people, great. Waving, okay. Dolly. Dolly. I see. <laughs> anyway, go. Touring? Okay, cool. Good. So, anybody else want to say? You knew I wasn't not getting it. The working is the job. Okay, cool. Uh, she's the best in town. Okay. Traveling. Good. So, now Richie and I have a challenge for you. Good? We want you to stump us. We want you to come up with that thing that you would love to do. And we have to figure out a way that you could use that to volunteer and help somebody else. Anything you can think of. So for example, ice cream, right, is a great way to take somebody in the Big Brother Big Sister program. There's no little kid that doesn't like ice cream. You can take them and eat ice cream with them all day long. Who said reading? We have a lot of kids who struggle with their basic learning skills. To just have somebody to sit and read to them is an awesome thing. We also have a lot of seniors, right Michelle, that would love nothing more than for you to come read for them because they can't really see very well anymore. Good? Who wanted to travel? Maybe we could put together this trip to Disney. It would be awesome. <laughs> and take a bunch of people with us. Who else? Surfing. What are we going to do with surfing? Free lessons for kids who could never learn how to surf by themselves. Jack, that surfing thing might be a good idea. You should get on that. Good? Who else? Yeah, what would you say? Exercise. What are we going to do with exercise? So there's this amazing thing that goes on every other Tuesday in the SBH office. It's called Senior Zumba. It's the wildest thing you ever saw. And the seniors love it, and it's phenomenal. Good, Mr. Stein, what are you going to do? Ice hockey. Ice hockey. What are we going to do with ice hockey? Good. Barclay Center called me a week ago. They're willing to give us an hour and a half of ice time. What can we do with it? Yeah. Start thinking. Okay, I wouldn't know how to do that, but you would know how to do that. In the second part. Good? Bridge. We're going to do a bridge, guys. Bridge tournament, that's good. What else? Could you teach bridge? 
No? Yes. Okay, cool. Good. So I'm going to share this, okay? Good. We didn't plan this, right? One second. We didn't plan this, okay? For my mom, the fact that she gets out, gets to go out and play bridge, and that gives her a break from taking care of my dad, who's home all the time, is a tremendous thing. You are doing an amazing thing for my mother. Thank you. There you go. So thank you. Good, Jerry. What are you doing all day? Jerry, <laughs> up with me. Yeah. Anything. Decorate. Awesome. So how are we going to put Jerry's decorating skills to use? Got any idea? Or not really. You want to really decorate. Create. Right? Creative. Good. So we started a program called Open a Home when newlywed couples that are just getting married and don't have the financial resources, we actually go into their apartment and decorate the house for them. So it's one less thing they have to worry about and they can get a head start on their marriage. Nobody's stumped us yet, Reggie. Yeah, it's crazy. I thought Bridge was easy. Bridge was tough. I always say that one, Jaime. Sitting on the beach. That might be a little tougher. What are you going to do with sitting on the beach? What do you mean by actually sitting? Just sitting on the beach. And doing nothing while nothing, you're on the beach. Nothing, nobody, zero around you. Just by yourself. A few people, a few more people will do. Yeah, like this is going to be mine. Good. Sunset on the beach. Wait, we have the makings of a day. <laughs> <laughs> He's currently taking. Got it. So then all of these things should be easy and which our work here is done. Pretty much, yeah. Right? We have all these programs that are ready to start. Do you guys need anything to make all these things happen? Because I'm assuming they'll all be up and running by the end of the night. Who said money? I'd rather hang on. Good. So there are a couple so, of really obvious excuses. You want to take them? Yeah, no, 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 no. What if I told you you have the money, the resources, the support staff, and any backup you need to make any of those things happen? Promise. You don't have to raise a single dollar. You don't have to get a single volunteer. All you have to do is what you said you love to do. It's a very hard reality. And that's it. That means the only thing standing in my way is me. Yeah. Nice. That would mean that. Yeah. Right. Time is standing in the way? You mean to tell me all of your time is full? Productively? <laughs> it's a good try. Good. So what's stopping all of you from doing these things? Jerry, what's stopping you from decorating people's houses? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe promise I wasn't going to pick up. What's so. stopping you from reading for seniors? And what's stopping you from taking somebody surfing who would never know how to learn otherwise? Age? Hmm? Okay. We have houses that need painting. What do you mean by age? Is that age? Yeah. Like in how old you are?
This is when it's supposed to get quiet and uncomfortable in here. And everybody's supposed to start squirming a little bit. Because the reality is, there is nothing standing in your way. And the reality is, the situation that we just described is real. Because I made fun of Teddy, but a bunch of high school and college kids came to me and said, let's take some people to Disney for the weekend, and we'll run a half marathon. And 800 people went last year and raised way over a million dollars for the call I mean, Your budget just for the flights is what? So Teddy has a budget of about $100,000 to spend on flights. Who's checking on you? The only thing standing in your way is you, which is really uncomfortable and awkward and difficult to wrap our heads around. But let's go back to where we started. Do we want to make a difference? Do we want to turn around that sinat chinam and have an impact on the world we live in? We've proven that you're capable of because all you have to do is do what you love. And we've proven that the resources are there to make it happen, because they are. So now what? Super standard. Now what? Yes, we're supposed to make you sweat a little bit. Out. So while those are going out, I'll tell the second story, which is why I think Charles asked to be here. So I had this exact conversation with Charles about a year and a half ago. Um, and uh, so Charles really wanted to write music, get in the studio, perform. I said, okay, so let's stop. And he said, I don't know, I'm not going to perform for it. I'm going to write, I'm going to come up with the money. Because I'll help you. So uh, we started getting into the studio. A little bit I know, as we got into the studio, things started to pick up. We started to use our music to help other people, to go visit people, to inspire people, to bring them into the studio with us. And uh, fast forward, I don't need to go through all the details, but um, this past February, I believe we sang the SBH4 Dream Song to I don't know, 26,000 people. 26, 27,000 people have heard of their foraging SDH song. So for me, that was the dream. Um, all in all, the beauty of doing that was I was having the time of my life. I really wasn't even thinking about other people that I was helping, which seems a little selfish, but I think the only true way to build out a chesed component, to build out something that is meaningful for other people, is when it's a direct extension of you, and when it's a direct expression. So if there's something that you love, it's ice hockey, it's traveling, it's bridge, it's surfing, whatever it is, those things are going to be the things that allow you to express yourself and offer it to other people, and it will come through in ways that other things can. But more than that, it's going to build who you are. And if you build who you are, like Charles was saying, it's not even about basis love. There's no reason not to love everybody else because you're comfortable in your own skin. You don't have any of the anger, the jealousy, any of the hangers. Because you understand that what you can offer the world in that expression, nobody else can. So that's story number two. So what we wanted to do today was make you feel a drop uncomfortable. I hope we've succeeded in doing that. And what we wanted to show you was the people in this room are the people who are going to make a difference. They are the people who get it. And we can wait for somebody else to do something, but that sort of takes all the power out of our hands. We have the ability to make a huge difference in somebody else's life and in our own lives. The only thing stopping us is us. And we have to do it. It's not going to happen by itself. So one of two things is going to happen right after Richie sort of wraps things up. 
Either you will say, wow, that was weird, and thank God I'm at it there. <laughs> or you will say, wait a minute, I am special. I can do something huge, but I have to take the first step in order to make it happen. And nobody can force me to take that step. Nobody can take that step for me. I have to do it. And then once I do it, who knows what opens up in front of you? Who knows the impact it has? Who knows how many people can be impacted and ultimately how much good could come from it? And we never really know at the end of the day what tips the scales one way or the other. And as an extra added bonus, after 120, when that day comes, we'll know that the stuff that's written about our lives was real and meaningful and important and impactful. And that God put us here for a reason and we did something, which is a much, much better alternative than not. So our request of you until second from now in which you pulls this all together, is please let us upset you. Please let us rattle your cage. Please take the booklet that we gave you and either find something in there that speaks to you or come to us with something that, that's not in there and we will make it happen. And you won't have to raise a dollar and you won't have to put a team together all you have to do is take that first baby step. You have a promise from us that we will do everything we can to help you once you take that first step. And ultimately, I believe that's really the message that we need to take from T-Shirt Valley. That each and every one of us has a chance to change that reality, to make the world much more ahavat khinam The beauty of, of this is that this concept is fully embedded in the day. So what do I mean by that? So like Charles mentioned earlier, we want to take a little bit of a positive spin. So the Ben Lamy Dash both of them will destroy it on this thing. So we, we're supposedly supposed to be yearning for the new Ben Lamy Dash to come back. So why do we need it? Why do we need the Ben Lamy Dash both? What? Why do we need the Beth and the Why do we pray for it? What do we need it for? Connection to Hashem. I can connect to Hashem right now. I can connect a lot better, so a closer relationship with God. Beautiful. Why else? Stability, consistency. So I think that's a beautiful point, but we see that it got ripped away from us as well. It completes us. So what does it do for me that I'm added value? Why the Bethany Dash? Unity of the nation, good. So what do all these things do for you? Centrality, central focus point, fantastic. So why? Why is that a central focus point? Anybody know? Stay connected, but why Bethany Dash specifically? Why that specific spot? Fantastic, it's our identity. So how do we know the Bethany Dash is identity? How do we know that? What's in the Bethany Dash? Where is the spot? The chef now will rest there, beautiful, but why? There's a reason why he says he will rest there. The only instruction we fast for, so tell me what is special about that spot. I'm already out of Akeda, but before that, keep going. What's the first time you introduced to the Bethany Dash? Keep going. Keep going. Could I just keep going back? Oh, the ladder. Sulam, good. Keep going back. Back. Take me back to the beginning. No, I'm further back. Adam, further back. Bereshit. Even Ashia. Can you tell anyone? Right? It's the foundation point of where everything was developed, which means that when we get back there, everything that's created, you're back in Bereshit. You're back in creativity mode. 
So we talk about things like we just spoke about in terms of finding out my expression and how I create and what's unique to me. It's very much in line with what everything that the day has to do with in terms of the day of the Dutch. Because when you can go back home, what we call home, if you think about home, home tends to be a place where you're comfortable. Home tends to be a place where you can find your identity, right? And if you expand that out, your home isn't just where you live. Your home can be places where, again, you're building, your synagogue, SBH, a studio for some people, right? So when you bring it all together and you think about it, when we're yearning for the Beth HaMikdash, when we're yearning for these things, it all comes back to not say that in terms of creativity. How am I going to impact the world? How am I going to find my expression to go out there and pull people in and let them see what excites me, gets charged up, and then therefore create that ripple effect? So when you bring all of it together in terms of the Shabbat, that's what it's about. It's about me expressing me, and me finding me, and me building me. And in return, I'm building others. And me building others, and in return, I'm being me, right? It's, it's that kind of thing. So Charles gave you the challenge. We're up for it. I lived it twice in my life, and uh, we're both very scary times. But once you get there, there's no greater fun that you can possibly have. So, uh, get it. It's our that when this year goes by, we're able to step back and look at all the things that we did to improve the world around us, all the things that we did to improve ourselves, to shine in the way that we can. And God willing, this day will be turned into a young of Thank you.